Hi, my name is Artie Pecoraro. This is uh, part three of Ocean Gate during 1953. And uh, where I left off was at Kelly's uh, on the boardwalk by the um, first pier. And right next to Kelly's was a house. It's still there. It had a, like a, a cement wall, maybe about a foot and a half high across the front of it and grass on the top. And there was a tree on, on that grass and that green tree grew blackberries, and you could pick them and eat them. I mean, sometimes there were bugs on them, but you know, most of the time you just blew them off and ate the things. And the people didn't care; they just kind of let you do it, and it was a fun thing to do. Um, it's also uh, a hotel. That's what we called it at the time, at the first pier, and. Uh, it had rooms in it, and people would rent the rooms for the day or the weekend or whatever. Um, it was one of those really old, old buildings with uh, you know, uh, wood throughout, and little bitty rooms. Uh, I've only been I was only up by the rooms once or twice, and I was a little kid, so I don't even remember. And um, I can't remember if there was a candy store in the bottom of it or not. I don't think there was at the time. But right outside, there was sand right next to the first pier, but on the opposite side of the boardwalk. And there were swings there, and there was one of those uh, um, playground merry-go-rounds where you can sit on it or stand on it, and you just push it with your hands and uh, seesaws. So a lot of kids used to go there to play. Oh, and there was a, a, a slide there too. Um, but it wasn't as slippery as the slides on the pier. And down the street, about halfway uh, down the street from the first pier, there was a, another candy store called Gills. And uh, most of the older kids hung around there, or older than I was anyway. And I used to go there to buy comic books when I was younger. And they had these... Um, root beers, frozen mugs with root beer. You could buy a root beer. That was really good. A lot of people used to buy them. And then there was, there was two rooms in Gills. And uh, the back room had like tables and that's where mostly the uh, older kids hung out. And uh, that was a lot of fun too. And then on Ocean Gate Avenue there was another uh, candy store right across the street, right across Bayview Avenue from the Anchor Inn. It was called, we used to call it the Hershey Ladies. And uh, the people who owned it, the Hershey later, they lived like behind the store. So their house, the, the store was sort of like the front of their house. So you would go in and there would be this door uh, back to the house behind the counter. And it was up a few steps to the house. So you could kind of see into the house and she would come to the door, you know, come to the door and then come down and serve you there. And... Uh, at that time, things were really cheap compared to now. It was probably a penny for some some pieces of candy. A nickel was an expensive bar candy, like a, an Almond Joy or a Mar well, they didn't call them Mars bars then, or a Milky Way or something like that. So that was uh, one of the candy stores in town. And uh, the post office at that time there was no real post office per se as a separate building. Uh, there was a candy store on uh, Ocean Gate Avenue, right, right, it was the next building from the Anchor Inn. There was, the Anchor Inn still had their little yard there, but it was the next building. And, uh, well, actually the first building was Ralph's Barbershop where you could get a haircut for a dollar. And I don't remember if, if the the next, the next store was another candy store, Batilla's, and I don't remember if the uh, post office was in it, Batilla's or Ralph's, but you used to go into the store or into the barbershop, I forget which one, and there were like uh, little boxes there, and um, there's a little, little counter, and you would just ask whoever the guy was at the candy store or at Ralph's, you know, is there any mail for so-and-so, and he would either give it to you or not give it to you if you had it. And uh, 
further down on Ocean Gate Avenue, down by Arburn Avenue, was one gas station. It was called Dan's. And uh, the only gas station in town, I mean, now you'd be surprised if there even was a gas station. And, uh, yeah, you could get your car fixed there, fixed there. Dan was the only mechanic. He was the mayor's, I think, son-in-law at the time. He lived right on the block, same block as the Hershey ladies. And, uh, I don't know, some people liked them, some people didn't, but you could buy gas there. And then further down from Dan's was Ocean Gate School. Now, this is in basically the same spot as now, but when we first got there, there were only three classrooms in the whole school. And one was one building, and then there was another building with two classrooms. And these three classrooms held six grades. Now, I understand from some of my older friends that when they lived in Ocean Gate, when they were older, there was only the one-room schoolhouse with all the sixth grades in it. So you can imagine how many kids went to the school. Not that many. Um, now on, I think it was Point Pleasant Avenue, between, just off Monmouth, going towards the first pier, there was a house, and the, and the streets came into a triangle. There was a house at this triangle, and this house had, if, it's still there, you can go look at it. The chimney is looks like a little kid built it. You know, the, the, the bricks are sticking out all over the place. It's not, it's not smooth on the sides. Uh, and if you look at it, you say, who the heck built this stupid chimney? So the rumor is, I don't know if it's true or not, is that... Um, Two guys built it while they were drunk. And one of those guys, I believe at the time, was the fire chief. So I don't know if that rumor is true or not, but you could go see the chimney. It's still there. And back by the woods at, in those days, uh, on Arvern Avenue and on, uh, mostly on Arvern Avenue and, and mostly towards the, um, towards the end by the marshes, there were deer flies in the woods, and they would come into the town a little bit. And these deer flies had the worst bite of anything you've ever experienced in your life. They're probably still there. They would look like they're kind of triangular shaped and maybe about um, an inch wide. They looked like they were an inch wide because their wings were kind of big. And these things would land on you and bite you, and you think a, a green horsefly had a bad bite. These things were a million times worse than that. Um, it was just, they are just terrible. And, but they weren't really towards the water, mostly just towards the, um, towards the woods. I mean, occasionally they'd go by the water, but not, not usually. And, uh, also back in those days, the water, um, came up different than it does now. Since since those days they've uh, replenished the beach several times but back in those days <clears throat> if you were to look out on the second pier right to the left where the row houses are there's there's a cement on the floor the ground you'll see a cement thing and then the water used to come right underneath the um, boardwalk right up to that cement thing and that water used to come up under the boardwalk all the way to mama to longport avenue right before the Monmouth Pavilion. That's that that's that street that comes in right before if you're going towards the first pier, it's the next street. And the water used to be right under the boardwalk all over there. And even by the first pier they were I mean literally the beach from the first pier to Asbury Avenue was literally one foot. You would go down these steps and you would step on the sand and the water would be right there. Um, it w was the smallest beach in the entire world. I mean, obviously, nobody's sat on it or anything because you really couldn't. But um, there was a, a little bit of a beach there. And uh, oh, let's see. I'm reading from some notes I wrote down here. There was also some tall grass on the beach by the second pier, which isn't there anymore. 
but it used to be there. There used to be swings and a seesaw. And uh, over at the first pier by the hotel, between the hotel and the boardwalk, there was sand and there were swings there. Oh, I, th I said that before, the swings, the slide, and, and uh, there was also a seesaw there. Now at that time, the Anchor Inn wasn't really a restaurant. It was really only a bar. And um, I don't remember if it was then or when I was older, but they would start having a, an organist come in and play on Friday and Saturday nights and people would go and dance and stuff. But before that, it was really just a bar. It really wasn't a restaurant at all. Now, George's Bar, the one on Monmouth Avenue, that had a um, shuffleboard. Uh, that's what we used to call it. It was one of these things where it was a really long rectangular table, and there was a, in the center of it, it looked like a, a bowling alley floor. And you would get this round thing, uh, like a puck, and push it down and to the other end and to, to the shuffleboard thing. And there was, um, gutters all around it so that the thing could fall off easily. And that had, they had saw, sawdust in there to make it be slipperier, slipperier. And uh, George's was known for uh, having good hamburgers at the time. I don't remember the Anchor Inn being known for any food at the time. But out on Route 9, one of the few things that was there was the Beachwood Diner. It was very small and it was green didn't have any seats at all, just uh, stools, and they had good hamburgers and good coleslaw. I remember that was the first place I ever even ate coleslaw. Oh, and another place in between um, Beechwood and Ocean Gate on Route 9, just before Cosmos, the wrecking place, there used to be a, um, a homemade ice cream place called Laddie's that everybody used to stop there on their way in on Friday nights and they had the best ice cream that you ever tasted in your whole life. And that's, that's long gone now, but that was the only th one of the only things there on that side uh, between, it was after, after Pine Beach, right before Cosmo's Wrecking Place. And across the street, the building still there, used to be at that time Max Bar and Grill. And when you got toward to Ocean Gate at that time, there were these two gigantic arrows. They were probably eight or ten feet long, I guess, and maybe a foot or two high, and they were arrows, <laughs> big arrows, and right on it it said Ocean Gate, and they were right on Route 9, and they both pointed into Ocean Gate during those days. So I'm going to stop here for Part 3, and I'll pick it up again with Part 4. Thanks.